video starts, make sure you follow our socials in the description and subscribe so you never miss an episode. Welcome back to your Be Podcast, people. Back again this week, joined by Amos Murphy for his second appearance. Yeah, how are you, up. mate? Yeah, not bad. Uh, up with yeah. We're on soup. There's not too fair. There's not many people are on what, soup. What's the, what's the uh, like the record appearances? Because I, uh, I think it's Kieran who's on like about four or five. Uh, but to be fair, he's my mate from round the corner. I'm coming for it. <laughs> <laughs> um, and joined by this week, very special guest, Cam Mason's in the house. How thank are we, you mate? Very, very well. Thank you for having me, mate. Um, thank you for coming down. Appreciate that. So um, it's going to be a very football heavy episode. Just to warn everybody today, um, we've got three huge City fans and yeah. also someone yeah. who plays in the National League North so play for Curzon don't you in a moment yes Curzon Ashton yep uh, been back about a month now so yeah really enjoying it yeah. it's been your longest because you had a bit you had a really long spell didn't you beforehand so you played for them was about six years yeah, I and did then... about seven years and then I left for two seasons and now I'm back so yeah can't stay away from the place really. <laughs> yeah. well with Curzon it's a bit of a weird when I was always growing up Curzon was always like one of the smaller teams in Tameside yeah. and now you're like two leagues above everyone else, aren't you? Yeah, we're flying now, um, but still a long way to go. The gaffer's got his plan, so hopefully it'll be three year, three leagues above everybody <laughs> else at the end of this season, fingers crossed. I mean, we'll be really get, getting in with the big boys then, won't we? Cause, oh, mate, yeah. And isn't the like, majority of the team now in the National League are all professional? Um, you're talking like one or two teams who aren't, and they're at the bottom. of the, uh, Last year, it was mad. You had... Um, Pretty much 95% of the league was professional. That's most of them well, are professional in our league now. Yeah, yeah. South, South Shields are pro, South aren't they? Shields. Are Darlington pro? Uh, no, they do part-time. Um, I'm trying to think of the other ones. There's about six or seven, so it's a fair. <laughs> National League North is it's six or seven. Crazy, it's, yeah, it's crazy. Football is just mad at them. Yeah. Like, especially when you speak to because we, we know quite a few American lads. Mm. Like, as soon as you're talking about like the English football league to them, they're like, what? <laughs> yeah. It is mental. Trying to explain that like, you've got... like. For example, Berry, yeah. ninth tier, and they had four, was it 5K? Five, five and a half K at the first game back at Gig Lane. It's incredible. Yeah. It's, it's ridiculous, it's, isn't it? It's definitely a fair, fair, fair <laughs> yeah. show in that, isn't it? Yeah. For, uh, for, for their and league. that's like half of Bournemouth's capacity that's in the Premier League. So you think yeah. like that. But Berry have just, they're a club we born, aren't they? So I suppose yeah. the hype is always good. Yeah. I've, I've, been, I've done a Berry away day. I went with Oldham away like <laughs> about four or five years ago. It's class, to be fair. Yeah, it's it? a good, good setup in uh, Gig Lane. Yeah, it was good. I was there for the, the first game back and it was, um, you could tell it meant it meant so much. Yeah. I, I was obviously not any affiliation to club myself, but when they, when they came out, the players came out for the first time, got a little goosebumps as well. It was um, it's pretty incredible. It's weird though, because they're like, we're, we're in like a nine tier now. Everybody knows on those of someone who's playing for that team yeah, and always been, yeah. been affiliated. Yeah, I've got about four X teams. <laughs> yeah, I was, was going to say it's like, it's like Benito who scored the two yeah. goals. He literally yeah. went to the high school around the corner from me. Jack Tinning, who set up the third goal of the corner. I've played cricket with Jack for years. Jack, I'm, no, I'm known him since I was like ten. <laughs> You'll and be that, getting a goal. Like, like, I'm like, what? <laughs> Mate, you've not seen me play football yet. <laughs> There's no goals happening. So I suppose we should kind of dive into the life of being a goalkeeper because it is a. It's a very interesting part of football, in my opinion. Yeah. So, and you 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 were a striker, weren't you? And then yeah. kind of yeah. moved around. Well, no, I was a keeper, and then I went to Australia, came back, fell out of love with footy, um, and cousin held a trial day. So me and my mate thought, well, fuck it, so it's in the see what happens. <laughs> yeah. So I went as a striker, and uh, yeah, he signed me on. So played for a year up front, and then. Someone grasped on me and told him I was a keeper. <laughs> <laughs> Someone grasped on you and gave you a longer career. Yeah. So, because at the time the number one, they needed a number two for the first team, um, and basically a lad who I knew just went up to the manager and said he's a keeper, and they didn't believe him basically. And what it was, the reserve training the next week, the staff weren't there. I don't know why. So this gentleman took training, and I thought got my gloves in the car uh, you know I've kind of missed playing in goal I'll go yeah. in goal for this one session no one's here like brilliant had a class session to be fair probably one of the best fans. and then I realised that the guy who took training was the first team coach oh. <laughs> that's so it you, then so that's you, you it. accidentally got a promotion <laughs> who now funnily enough is the gaffer of the first team <laughs> Class. So, that is so niche. How many footballers do you know who can tell a story like so, that? So, uh, yeah, spent a year up front and then yeah, got grassed up, stitched myself <laughs> up and now I'm, uh, yeah, I can't get the gloves off, unfortunately. Been begging for years to <laughs> let me have a run up front, but it's not happening. Pre-season friendlies is just your way it's forward. It's just not happening, honestly. <laughs> I'm begging to do shooting and training. Like, when we do goalie sessions, I'm like, 
as long as there's shooting in it, kids, I'm, I'm happy. And he goes, yeah, we'll put some shooting in it. Yeah, I'll be there then. Yeah, I'm ready. <laughs> <laughs> Bribing your goalkeeper oh, no. with, a, with a shooting. Yeah. To be fair, though, like, there's a city, because we're, we're two big city fans yeah, as well, yeah. and they, they've, they've had a few goalkeepers who are quite good at the feet, let's just say. Like, I remember Joe Hart, because I used to sit mm. in the family stand. I used to watch the warm-ups when I was a kid. And I'd be watching, I'd be like, Joe Hart's pinging him top corner here every fucking yeah. time. Like, what is happening? thing is with keepers we're probably one of the best strikers of the ball you could get in a team yeah, yeah so we're, we're, all we do is strike a ball really yeah. like that's all we do um you know but then you get some that couldn't strike a ball to save the life i think it just depends what it is doesn't it like now in the modern game you have to be good with your feet yeah. if you're not well, like david de gea is a prime example <laughs> at united <laughs> if, if you can't do it you're gone yeah and that's somebody who's been there for a long time even though some might argue that De Gea's a better goalkeeper than who they've brought in, it's irrelevant. They've brought somebody in who's just better with the feet. Yeah, he's a lot better. He so, showed it in the Champions League final, didn't he? Yeah, he was just pinging the ball everywhere. Oh, no, no, yeah. Yeah, 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 he's yeah. a very good player. I, obviously, as a City fan, was very nervous that game, but I loved watching him, just how he distributed the ball all game. I was talking more about him than I was about City winning the Champions League <laughs> final. My dad was like, shut up. Like, yeah, so... Uh, I suppose that's the thing. Do, do, do you see, when you find yourself watching sort of like the pros playing... Yeah. Do you ever like? Do you find yourself just analysing keepers' performance just because that's what you I know? Think naturally, you just mm. analyse. I think that's what it is. If you're a football fan or a football player, you just analyse, don't you? Like, I'll, I'll sit there and like I watched the game yesterday from the stand because obviously rest me for next week and you know you analyse different things and how things do it. Not in a negative way, but like I was watching Halifax's keeper Sam, who's been around a long time, mm-hmm. um, and just the way he does things because at the end of the day, he he stayed at that level for a long period of time. So he must do something to keep him at that level. So, mm. yeah, you do find yourself analysing and trying to pick up little things. I think what I try and do is be like a bit of a sponge. So everybody you work with, taking all the information they give, get rid of what you don't think will help you, but then keep what you think will. It might only be a small thing, but if that small thing improves you, gives you the best chance to try and, you know, move on from there. It's a bit like drummers, isn't it? Yeah. In music, you know, they isolate the drums in a piece of music. Or if you're a singer, you know, you isolate the lyrics. So it's, it's interesting to know that when you're watching football, you're looking at what your competitor does. Do you do you learn much from that? And what sort of things do you learn from that? Is well, it the, the tiny little details yeah. or is it a, a glaringly yeah, obvious like thing that for, we wouldn't see? But yeah, you, yeah. yeah, for like a prime example, Sam yesterday at Halifax, he's quite a thick set lad, you know, strong, very good at coming for crosses. So I just, every time we had a corner or, you know, we looked like we were in a cross position, I just watched him. I didn't watch who was taking the corner. I just watched mm-hmm. him. What are his movements? What are his, like, where's his starting position? Just to try and get a, you know, you have to understand your capabilities as well. Obviously, I'm not a thick set lad. You know, I'm built like a child. Like, <laughs> he's, he's built like, you know, an action man. Do you know what I mean? So you have to understand that he might be a bit more confident in coming for things further away from his goal. But then starting positions can help. So, yeah, just like take small mm. things and, you know, in training next week, might try and implement that. Oh, well, if we're doing crossing, I might try and start here like he did. It might not work. If it don't work, scrap it. If it works, back pocket, go again. Mm. And I think that's a good way to do it. We have five of us at training. And like even the young lad who's 18, he was doing like this little technique and pickups. And I, I was like, oh, that was quite good. I might try that. <laughs> so I thought, I'm not going to tell him I'm going to try it. But <laughs> I tried it and I thought, wow, that feels like comfortable. And I asked him where he got that technique from. And he said he, he wasn't sure. He, he just, that's how he feels comfortable. And ever since, that's how I picked up the ball. And that's how like, and he's 18. So I think with keepers, like you say, we isolate ourselves. We're a team in a team. Yeah. I think that's the things with keepers. We all can only play for one shirt, but we all get along like we're best mates. Mm. That's, I, you see that. At the moment, one that's really striking out to me is Wrexham at the moment. Because yeah. obviously Ben Foster came in and yeah. took Mark's shirt. But straight away, Mark, because I, I remember the first interview we had when, ben, when he found Ben Foster, and he was so buzzing. And I thought, why are you so happy? Well, you, you will and, beef with Ben Foster. Oh, He's no, like the yeah, nicest true. person yeah. ever. But, uh, and now, you like watching him. So I've, I've been watching quite a lot of the American tour, and they're just right. like best mates. And yeah. you can see him in training properly getting on, and you're just like, it is a team within a team. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's mental well, looking at just it. Just like a mini team. like And you're all fighting for one shirt, but you all do everything you can to help each other try and get there it's it's strange but it works so well and you'll always learn something off someone like at the moment our number two used to coach me when i was 16 so <laughs> he's like 
you know, we have a good laugh saying, oh, I taught you how to do this, I taught you how to do that. I was like, yeah, fair enough, you know what I mean? But I'm still learning things off him. He's learning things off me, which is strange for me, but that's just how it works. You just pick up different things and different techniques and, you know, and, and it's great to, to do because, like I say, you all just help each other improve and eventually, you don't know, I might overhelp someone and they might take my <laughs> shirt, but, you know, like I say, it's a good... There's never any hard feelings with keepers. I don't often hear about keepers who dislike other keepers. Yeah. Like, it's just one of them things. It's like wicket keepers in cricket. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, apart from a certain Aussie. But apart from, <laughs> you know, He's mint, though, isn't he? He, he, he is mint. But, yeah, you know, we, we'd we all do the same, probably. It's just, you just don't hear of it. Many yeah. kids who dislike other keepers. I don't know why, because they're all lunatics. Like, And anyone tells you who's not, we are... Keepers, keepers are lunatics. Yeah, they are. We like, are. They just are. Some of us are more weird and wonderful in our own ways and others but like we are just different like yeah. i suppose you have to be if you're willing to dive at someone's feet with metal studs, <laughs> you can't be wired up right can you you can't be can you and it's just like you know there's not many outfielders like that that you know mm-hmm. will do it so yeah we're different you know outfielders don't often like us they don't know our names they call us keeper and that's <laughs> how it goes but does that frustrate you because when you play five a side and stuff, I'm people so shout, lazy. I shout keeper, keeper. keeper. I, 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 but it's just, I play my best mate yeah. and I still shout keeper. Yeah, I'd fun. never shout the name. I'm so laid back, it doesn't really bother me. <laughs> right. I can imagine it bothers others, but with me, it doesn't really bother me. Yeah, that makes sense. Because you know, then when I mess up, at least I'm not getting too personal. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, yeah, coming for me, just say, oh, that keeper. Yeah, yeah. that could be anybody, mate. As long as you're not naming me. No, it doesn't really bother me. I think, you know... It'd be a bit weird if I started saying left back, wouldn't it? But <laughs> that's the thing, though. Yeah. That's that. You would never shout, oh, he's centre forward. To be it. fair, you do find yourself doing it because you'll say, oh, switch it to the left back. And you go, well, I know who that left back yeah, is. I should probably say his yeah. name. But yeah, no, it doesn't really bother me. I can imagine it bothers others, though. Yeah. Are, I, are you a talker on the pitch? Are you yeah, one of those keepers who's barking I'm orders? quite quiet in the dressing room. I like to keep myself to myself. Mm. If, I, if I feel like I can speak because I've been around a bit for my age, I will voice up I'm mm. not like a mute I don't you know and I try to interact with the lads obviously mm. I'm not one of them who sits in a corner and just like like that <laughs> but I'm very loud on the pitch and I think that's just my personality and my my winning mm. mentality coming out like I hate losing mm. I, I hate losing honestly uh, anything uh, anything I try at, I just hate it if we're playing connect four <laughs> and if you beat me I'm like let's go again 100% that's how yeah. you should be yeah, yeah. yeah. absolutely, you should absolutely. Be. Yeah, so I don't trust people who aren't really. agreed, agreed. Yeah. it's like people who let the kids win yeah. you should never oh, let your kids no win no, no, never no let your kids win you should batter them until they beat you <laughs> yeah. 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 life yeah. lessons that just, yeah. <laughs> life's not fair you know no, just absolutely agreed. but yeah definitely a talker um, just helps mm-hmm. just helps if you can talk as a keeper and pass information on and tell people where people are, that should make their job easier, which in theory should make yeah. your job easier. I would love to go to football and do nothing and come home not needing a shower. That would be my <laughs> dream day. Yeah. I go, well, that was easy. <laughs> you know, we won 3-0 and I did nothing. Mm. Like, you know, I think people think that keepers want to be man of the match and make 10 saves. Absolutely not. Mm. I want to turn up to footy, do nothing watch the lads absolutely smash a team off the park and go home. You've got the best view in the house, haven't you? The yeah. goalkeeper has got the best well, view yeah. in the football That's why right. you have to talk. Yeah. You can see everything. If someone's behind you, something's wrong. You've either gone too far, like Edison likes to do now and again, <laughs> but he can do what he wants. Yeah. That's different. <laughs> no one's going to tell him off. No, no one's going to tell him off. <laughs> but if I did that, he'd be like, come where you're going, come where you're going. Um, you can see everything. Mm. So I think if you're a keeper, you have to talk. If you're quiet, it just doesn't feel right like you know if you were watching a game as a keeper and you've heard one keeper dead loud and one dead quiet you'd notice it mm. instantly like you know there's difference in talk there's talking for talking sake but you have to talk with information that's valuable because no point just talking shit all game <laughs> you know there isn't and there isn't no point in that because nobody will listen to you mm. because they'll go is he still talking but if you pass on valuable information man left shoulder man right shoulder you know get up squeak you know people it keeps people switched on as well mm, yeah last five minutes of a game holding on one nil you've got someone behind you like commanding you it just helps you do it naturally and um i played center half a few times and in australia with a keeper who never shut up and last five minutes of games he's telling me get up get up you just naturally find mm. yourself doing it 
and even though you're tired. So I think that's a, a massive part of the game. I think at the top level, they probably don't talk as much as somebody like I'd have to because their concentration levels are like elite, aren't they? That's yeah, why yeah. they're there. But I think as you go down, the more you can help each other, the, the better for the sure. Better it can be. I've, I, I, what, I've talked about like tactics and stuff like that that you were referring to. I've been watching a lot of bunch of amateurs recently. Yeah. And they always focused on sort of a team talks beforehand and about the tactical elements of it. And it's always the managers telling the outfield. So do you know like for goalkeepers, do you find is it the goalkeeper coach who gives you instructions? Or is it the manager or how does it kind of work? It depends the way we play. Like at Curzon, we play passing football. So the way we build up starts with me. So I think with us at the moment, it's very all together. Like this is how we set up, this is how we play. If I'm not if, I, if I'm not having a good game with my feet, that affects us all. Like, mm. where with certain teams, they might just say, just hit an area. Now, if you're having a bad day kicking long, you'll probably kick four out of ten poorly. Now, with a team that goes long, that's not probably too bad because you're just playing for second balls, aren't you? Yeah. But the way we play relies on me to be consistently good. So, I think, like you say, some teams probably just the goalie coach says, oh, just hit the fullback or hit, hit an area and that's your job. So actually, you probably don't need a team talk. Mm -hmm. If you if, if you play like Stoke used to do many years ago, where they used to just hit number nines and just play off. Hit Ricardo off. Fuller. Hit Kenwin Jones. That's yeah. all you need. Hit Kenwin Jones, Ricardo Fuller. What do you need a team talk for? You yeah, know yeah. what you're doing. That's yeah, yeah. your team tactics. Yeah. It, so every time you get the ball, your job is to hit them two. Um, you know, if if the way we play, it's not like that. It's all transitions and movements and but. I think after you've done them in training so many times, just like regimented, you, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know someone's going to be there without looking, you still look. But you know what I mean? It's just, it just depends on the way you play, mm. I think. I think if, like say, if you're going long, what do you need a team talk for? You know what you're doing. Every time you get a goal kick, you're putting it down, you're telling them to get up and you're booming it and that's it. The way we play, it's a bit more different out from the back and you've got to trust each other when you do that. So we do have team talks about that and we do work on it together because... It's risky, isn't it? Playing out from the back. Yeah. If you're not all on the same page, you make yourselves look a bit a bit stupid. Yeah. I mean, it, it does happen once a year, doesn't it? I mean, it happens in every every pro team, especially once playing out of the back. You just got you just got it. Like sometimes when we're at City now, when we sort of make a mistake from the back and we can see everyone's like, oh well, that's the one for the season. Yeah. <laughs> that's just what's yeah, like, yeah. The best attitude to have, I think. Yeah. That, to be honest. Yeah, yeah, it's bound to happen, and and, and you sacrifice that, don't you? You know that's going to yeah. happen. It's it's high risk, high reward. Yeah, definitely. High risk, high reward. If they press you and you play out from the back, all it takes is three passes and you've took on six of their players. No one's mm. moaning then. But, yeah, yeah. but if you lose the ball to six of their players, you've got to accept that it will happen sometimes. And especially as a keeper, if you mess up, it's normally a goal. Like that's, and I think that's one of my biggest strengths. When I mess up, it doesn't affect me at all. Like mm. It really doesn't. I, I don't sulk or moan or go in a shell. Like If, if I mess up say I don't know coming for a cross I missed the cross you know they score you know I won't then try and force myself to come mm. for the next cross but I'm not going to stand on my line all game and be like oh I'm not coming for a cross again I, you know you have to just uh, that's that one out of the way next one do you know what I mean and that's that, I think that's what you've got to do same with City when they're playing out when they mess up they don't all go into a shell and go oh no don't give it me it's just like come on let's go again I think yeah. That's elite attitude that you've you've got to have. It's, yeah. it's interesting that's filtered down to your level. So you play sixth to yeah. of English football. When, when would you say? Obviously, you've been in football a while. When would you say you really start to see a playing out from the bat mentality implemented in the lower leagues? Sort of from the Premier League down to the lower. To be leagues? honest, at Curzon, I've always seen it because I think when I started playing, because I was comfortable playing outfield the manager at the time John Fallingham utilised the fact that mm. wow this lad can pass a ball like he wasn't asking me to hit 50 yard die oh yeah 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 but he was going, not John Joe Shelby are <laughs> you <laughs> he, he was saying he was saying wow this, this lad can pass it and he can you know so I think at Curzon mm. I always seen it it wasn't until I saw other teams try, probably about well, two or three years of me being in there like you filed to have, you know they, mm. they play some nice football yeah. Kidderminster have always played nice football the full time teams will because they can work mm. on it like every day I think with part time teams what you get is you, you. it just depends on managers doesn't it and mm. things like that like there's still managers now that just refuse to play football you know <laughs> like it just doesn't happen mm. like ball bouncing midfield hook it you not don't get your foot on it and play just hook it so I think there's probably more that want to play, 
I think also what you've got to think is conditions. That mm. makes a big difference. Yeah, yeah. Come December, you're playing on a cow pat. You know what mm. I mean? Like it's not that easy to play this nice, pretty football. So you might turn up one day and go, "Yeah, it's not happening today, lads." Mm. Hit the big fella up front, and you might turn into that. And like we were saying about team talks, that yeah. is your team talk. Look at the pitch. Look at the condition. When you've been around a bit, you don't really need to be told. Of course, yeah, you, yeah, you, you kind of like, see, can't you? I look at the goal. It's like, it's like in cricket terms. When you turn up to a ground, you know whether you're batting or bowling. Yeah, yeah instantly. Exactly. One look no, at yeah. the pitch. Yeah, that's yeah. all you need to do. Yeah. yeah, like I look at the goal coach. Goal coach, look at me and go, "I ain't passing that out." We just go along. We just go along. And I think that's where maybe it staggers a bit through the yeah. season at our level because. Mm-hmm. Curzon's pitch is unbelievable and I think that sometimes is our biggest downfall it's such a nice place to come to when teams come oh it's a treat in it but it's like a luxury a level, like, here yeah, we go. it does they're level not, the play they're not they're literally not, levels they're the they're play they're not yeah. bothered like we played Bolton a few weeks ago these Bolton lads couldn't believe how good our pitch was mm. and I'm like well if they think it's good what do Kettering think yeah. Yeah. who play in the middle of nowhere on a cow pat you know when they come they go wow yeah like, change rooms are nice it's not nasty enough I don't think I, I said I'd paint the change room, the away change room like black <laughs> <laughs> no you should do I agree with or, that or dark blue so it's a bit more dull and a bit yeah. more like mm. you go to file the way you don't get phone signal in your change room you know what I'm annoying that their, st- <laughs> <laughs> their stadium's the weirdest place I've ever been there yeah, it's, it's, there's it's, a Greg's I think there's a Greg's attached to the stadium I've been in that Greg's <laughs> the dream <laughs> that is yeah. I, I, if I turned up to an away game and there was a Greg's in the set I'd be like boy winning 5 nil. as well I yeah, there's, there's, yeah and there's, well. I swear there's an Aldi <laughs> it's, it's Boston, Boston have got the same now because Boston have moved ground they've got like a mini retail park further on and I nearly got left by the coach last year because it was in Costa and the uh, <laughs> The coach was setting off, I ran out of cost like, whoa, don't leave me here. I don't want to be here. All the way in Boston. Oh, like, yeah, that's a so, nightmare. You know, it's, uh, yeah, they're, they're good grounds, actually. Mm. It made me look forward to Boston away now. It's weird, that, because I remember on a City tour like, ages ago, and they were telling us about that, because like, Fergie was quite big for sort of yeah. like, changing room. Um, who, what was a team that had an L and then they had the keepers sat around the corner oh there's, there's some like that yeah uh, like Bradford Park Avenue who got relegated last year honestly it's like a butcher's dungeon <laughs> <laughs> anybody who's played at Bradford Park Avenue will honestly back me up you turn up you go down some stairs that are this wide so when you've got metal studs on it's Astro now but when you used to I used to hate going to Bradford it was the worst pitch going you, you got changed downstairs in a butcher's dungeon. It was freezing with them plastic flaps on the thing. Fuck off. To get you are sh- joking. Seriously, the, the change room was like, like you say, an L shape. So half your lads you couldn't see, you thought you were playing five a side with your mates. <laughs> <laughs> and you, you, you nearly snapped your neck coming down the stairs, snapped your neck going up the stairs. When you got up the stairs, you were sheet white and the ref went, you all right, well, have you walked on the stairs? <laughs> and it was just a horrible place to go. They've now gone to an Astro. We played there was it last game of the season last year or the year before I weren't bothered about going I was like oh it's Astro not bothered nice mm. nice pitch can pass it you know to be fair our tactics weren't pass it but you know it was like I'm not bothered do you know what I mean and they'd actually changed the change rooms then from downstairs probably because it failed FA <laughs> yeah <laughs> we get to certainly <laughs> and, and, and they'd put them upstairs and do you know what the upstairs change room were nice I thought oh this is a nice place mm. this is alright and then your mindset just changes I've been to Bradford City. Only five of you can get changed at once. Do you know what I Bradford City in League Two. Yeah, only five of you can get changed at once. That small. I went there when I was in the youth team at Chesterfield, and the kit man went, "Well, one, he forgot the kit, so that was a good start." <laughs> it That's the only time I've ever not had a kit at football, and he forgot the kit. I was like, "Oh my god!" And he went, five of you have to get changed at once. So you have to go one to five, then obviously six to ten." I was like, you should know who you're starting. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, what? Oh, I'm 15, <laughs> fuck's sake. And, that, and, that's how, and that's how we did it. And, I've, and it just makes you feel uncomfortable. You're just like, oh, this is horrible. That's you're not, bizarre. You're not getting changed together. Yeah. Obviously, that was 10 years ago. I don't know if it's still the same process mm. now, but I, when I was in that environment, I thought, oh, this is horrible. Like Curzon, lovely pitch, unbelievable. And it is fair play to the ground staff and the club. You know, it's that attracts players, the facilities, without a shadow of a doubt, but it also attracts the opposition when they turn up and go, wow, like, mm, look yeah. at it. Their change room's identical to ours. Like I say, I'd paint it dark blue. Like, yeah, so yeah. it's still blue, so it looks like, so it's dull. Like, crack the light bulb or something so they don't have light. <laughs> I don't know, do something. 
just just to make them feel a bit oh you know this is shit do you mm-hmm. know what i mean uh, oh it's a nice pitch but oh, i don't like the change rooms and it gets your mind like ticking you know and it you know that's how it should be files change rooms lovely mm-hmm. it is like you go in it and it's like a five-star hotel like it's got baths and all sorts <laughs> and you're like wow this is i thought i could go sleep in that bath. <laughs> <laughs> i should have brought bubbles and you know but you get no phone signal which means no music so when you think about it, straight, no plug sockets. So you're not putting a speaker in. So it's like little mind games yeah. like that. That's what you need to do. Yeah, yeah. 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 And uh, I think that's, that's you know, when you do go to some of these places, you go, oh, my God. You know what I mean? Like, if I turn up, well, I played against Curzon when I was at Southport. I was like, well, at least I know it's nice pitch and it's a nice... Do you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah. I, I had nothing to worry about going to Curzon. Like, when you go to these places like Kettering, you've got to worry about your windscreen being on your car when you finish the game because <laughs> the fans are just horrible. <laughs> <laughs> like, horrible. Are they the worst you've played against? No, but, but, <laughs> <laughs> but they're up there. Who are the worst then? Because who, who, yeah. obviously they're the keeper. You get the shit. You get it. All. Fans? Yeah, yeah. Last year we played Darlow. No, two years ago we played Darlow. And he kept singing that... Uh, I left my wife and I got divorced. <laughs> I'd never been married. <laughs> so I don't know who they thought I was, but I spent the whole game thinking, the lads are going to think we're right. Like, <laughs> I was like, I don't Deviant. Even. I was like, I've never been married. What are you all going on? I actually turned around at one point. I've never been married. <laughs> what That's what you want as a footy fan. What are you going around. on yeah, about? They've got home, they've got home buzzing. That's a win. Fans. Yeah. <laughs> to be fair, I always interact with fans. Always behind my goal. Always, they give me shit. You better believe I'm going to turn around and give you shit. Like that's just how I am. I bet that catches them out though, because they, they won't expect. Oh yeah, because the I, keeper yeah. to turn around and, and I think, start to giving. To be fair, it. in some places I've probably gained a little bit of respect that mm-hmm. I don't. You know, I don't get me wrong. I don't. It doesn't distract me. Yeah. But you know, like when the ball's like someone's injured, and you know, I'm having a drink, and someone says, "Oh, keep you ugly, whatever you are." I'll turn around and say, "Fucking look at stay at you." Or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Well, when we played Latics last week, the referee called the lad behind the goal a specky four-eyed. I won't repeat the last word he said. <laughs> the referee. The referee, because this lad said to the referee, "Ref your shit," and he went, "Look at you, you specky four-eyed." I went, Whoa! <laughs> well, I looked, this is non-league football. Yeah, everybody. And I looked at this ref yeah. and thought. Okay, <laughs> you're not messing. But you're not messing with that ref now. No, you're not giving it him. But sir, I, yeah. hello, sir. You okay, sir? <laughs> but the lad had been giving me a bit of grief all game. I just looked at him. You're not saying nothing now. Are you? <laughs> I don't think he knew. I think you know. I think I've probably gained a bit of respect. Blythe have always. Blythe's a horrible place to go. Lovely people. Like yeah, they are. They're very passionate. All oh, northeast people. Northeast passionate. Yeah, yeah. Just just the way they built. But again, old ground, old changing room pitches. To be fair, not that bad, but if you go in January, you can imagine it's freezing, it's cold, it's wet, definitely wet, it's wet in July. <laughs> and then, and then you know, you've got, they do get a lot of fans, and they're passionate, and they'll say it as it is. I've seen them boo life, and I'm like, mm. they're playing all right. <laughs> like, you know, you, this is, this yeah. is a game, this. And, you know, I, I have, I actually speak to quite a few people from Blythe, you know, a bloke who does the announcing, I, I speak to him every time I go up because, you know, we had a good laugh with him when they came to Curzon that time. And I think, you know, if you interact with people, at the end of the day, you're paying £15 to watch me, who's not even a full-time footballer, play football. If you're putting your hard-earned money into watching me play football, you deserve entertainment, whether it's just a bit of a laugh and a giggle mm. with a keeper mm-hmm. or watching your team win 5-0. Look, the way we play it's going to be inconsistent as in the teams in our level it's going to be inconsistent because naturally you know we've got Kings Lynn away on a Tuesday night this season we all work mm. so I'm not who, who, who decision it's that mental, Stevie it? Wonder doesn't look at the map obviously <laughs> when, he, when he picks the fixtures and it's like you know some teams like we're talking about full time teams mm. well, they ain't bothered are they there's mm. They're missing work, we're missing training that day. Mm. I've got to book two days off work and I've got holidays left. Yeah, and yeah, I think yeah. that's how it is. So, you you know, I think you've got to have a laugh and a joke with fans and stuff. You know, I've been to some horrible, horrible places where I think, well, they are horrible. But then what you'll find is after the game, you go in the bar and it'd be like, well done, keeper. Mm. And you're like, oh, you know. Right. So it's always nice people. Mm. To be fair, I think... I refer to Kettering because the one time we went there, Southport were on a mint run. We'd won like 13 on the spin. We were flying or unbeaten. Went there on a Tuesday night, which is not ideal. I actually drove because I couldn't get out of work to get the coach. Mm. Got there, went in a work car, and 
when I come out, there was lads kicking cars, some fans who Jeez. weren't they weren't Kettering fans, but they'd gone to watch Kettering that evening. Yeah, yeah. They were kicking cars and stuff like that. I think you know we don't need stuff like that. And I think Kettering ended up, you know, basically just putting a statement out saying, look, we can't have this no more. A bloke nicked my glove towel. It came back smelling of piss, and you just think. Wow, like if that's what you want to get up to, that's up to you. I robbed that towel from Premier Inn. It's not that. <laughs> <laughs> like, if that's what you Chokes want. On, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> if you really think I'm going to be that upset about that, you know, and I just left it in the goal, and I think, you know, but you can kind of tell with non-league who's not a non-league fan. Yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Like you can drink on the terraces mm. in non-league, and you can see how people conduct themselves weekly who go, and you can normally tell nine times out of ten who is not a non-league fan, yeah. who is just someone who mm. has come to watch a local team because City are playing away. Do you know mm. what I mean? And yeah. they go, "Oh, let's go and watch these." I think that's where sometimes problems begin because you don't know how it works. Non-league is quite tight knit, yeah. so we do have a laugh, we do have a joke, and you know. It's not as serious because, like I say, we've all got full-time jobs. But you can always tell when people come from high big leagues. Yeah, yeah even yeah, players course. sometimes. Yeah, players turn up on loan and they think they'd be a piece of piss. And you know, or oh, I'm from wherever. This will be easy. It's like, nah, this ain't easy. Yeah, well, I, I, I spoke to uh, so we, we had a like called Josh Askew on. Um, oh, I used to play with Josh. Yeah, so, yeah. So Josh has been he's been around sort of an league, and he said like whenever he's playing, cause he plays left back or left back, left wing, when he yeah. plays left back and he sees a young guy on loan on the team sheet, he'll just snap him in the first minute. Yeah. Like, like, no matter who they are, he'll just snap him and yeah. usually they go in the shell. Yeah. Fascinating. Like, well, let's have a quick break anyway and go back to uh, and dive into part two in a bit. So in part two, I want to talk about England C as well because I think that's fascinating mm. for the people who don't understand what it is. Like, exactly. I didn't understand what went. it was. <laughs> 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 and we'll see you in part two. Thank you. Part two, welcome back, short break, straight back into it. So we did refer to it um, in the first part right at the end there, but the England C, for the people who, I'd say probably 90% of people who like footy fans, we don't even know what it is. Could you just explain kind of what England C is? England under, England under, England C, wish it was under, I'm too old for that. <laughs> England C is basically the non-league England team, so from the National League all the way down to, I think it's any level. I, I think, think it's like 10 I think, I think yeah. it was oh, like right. Wonder Kid in Sunday League, you could get called up to it. Um, you get treated like the first team, there's no difference, you get a cap, you get the kit, you train at well, wherever you're playing. Uh, yeah, and you just play different teams. So Wales have a C team, um, but I think the England C team have been and played like Estonia under-21s, just things like that. It's just an international call-up, basically. Just a different outlook on it, yeah. But it's one, is it one per club? Is that how it works? Or you can't No, have, you can have, you can have, you can have multiple. multiple. You can have yeah. multiple, yeah. I've probably got the list somewhere from when I was in it, and there's definitely multiple, because I was the only part-time lad on the list. Um, yeah, you can have multiple, I'm sure you can. It used to be you had to be under 25, but now it's changed. It's mm. open age now. So it's kind of like affected certain people because obviously it was a great little pathway for the younger people in non-league it's a little carrot on the end of a stick in that you do really well as a young lad and you get called up for England C that's great but now it's it's any age now mm. it, you know you can be 33 and get caught which is still great for them obviously um, but what you're seeing now is it's more lads who've dropped out full time footy coming to non-league and you know the, the, a bit better than everybody else and, and they, they'll probably get called up now yeah it's fascinating that, and it's, that's another thing. Imagine saying that to like Americans, mm. where you're like, "Yeah, so our non-league players who are part, some are part time, they play represent England <laughs> in, in, internationally." And you're like, "What?" And yeah, get a cap mad. for it. Yeah, it's, yeah. Uh, it's a bit strange, and I didn't know about it. I didn't know it existed. Um, and when I got told, I didn't believe the gaffer when he told me. Uh, so I put the phone down on him, <laughs> and then he rang me back and said, "Check your emails." I did, and it was there. My letter from the FA saying congratulations and stuff and I thought wow because if I'm being totally honest with you I didn't think I don't think I am still now to be honest I wasn't doing anything unbelievable at the time like I remember going home going wow all keepers must be injured like, <laughs> like, I know I, I did honestly you can ask my family I was like why 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 me because on the list seriously they're all full-time keepers Ben Killip was on there who is, well, was at Hartlepool, mm -hmm. um, stayed at Hartlepool playing in the Football League. He's just left. Unbelievable keeper. I'm trying to think who the other keepers were. There was me, obviously. Uh, oh, there was a lad from Barnet, a young lad who'd just come from a Prem team and gone to Barnet. So I thought, 
it's better than me. Like, and that weren't me being, you know, I don't want to go. Obviously, I want to go. But it did. It took me by surprise. Like I said, I didn't know what it was. And I was also thought, well, I'm not pulling up trees. I'm not doing anything different. I've been doing this for years. You know, it's strange. And it was nice to get the letter, explain why you're in. And that was nice to read because, you know, when you're like me, who... Wait, do we send you a letter explaining the decision of well, why I, you're included? Well, I, 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 when I spoke to the coat, the mm-hmm. goalie coat, he, he kind of basically just put it into words and why I was nice. included. That's of, good. So yeah. um, that was quite nice because quite a humble, you know, keep quiet about footy. I don't really talk about it, you know, like in a work environment and stuff. And when I went into work and said, oh, by the way, I need 10 days off because I'm going <laughs> playing for England, they were all like... <laughs> shut up and get back to work. <laughs> uh, and that was a change to them. My work are brilliant with my football. If I say I've got Kings in a way, it will get sorted and I can't thank work enough for that. And But I must admit when I went in and said that, I think it was kind of like, yeah, all right. You mm-hmm. know, next because, show. Yeah, because like a lot of my work colleagues are massive football fans. So England to them is England under 21s. Some of them probably couldn't even name some of the under 21s players. Mm, like yeah. only if I said... England C. They were like, what the hell's that? So, you know, it was a big thing for me because I say laid back, humble, don't really talk about my footy. I just turn up, do what I need to do and go home. That's not because I don't like footy. It's just because that's I'm there to do a job at the end of the day. Yeah, yeah. So it was nice to get the recognition of, you know, it just basically said I'd been very consistent for a long period of time. I could play with my feet. I was a, you know, a modernised goalkeeper and, you know, I, I deserved a little bit of, of a chance and I found that like, really good because I'd been lucky enough to be part of the Jamie Vardy Academy not long before, which was like, for, obviously Jamie Vardy came through. The, I don't know if you've heard of the V9 Academy, but that was like non-league players, they put you up at Man City for a week, you train full-time and you play two games while you're there and scouts from all football league clubs come watch you. Wow. Nice. That's good, isn't it? So yeah, there was... Like a, like a football middleman, really. Isn't yeah, it? yeah, so yeah. it was just a handful of us. There was three teams. So what's that? 50 lads, 45 lads from all over the country, non-league. Not necessarily part-time. They could be full-time. Uh, you got, obviously, housed at Man City for the week. Funny enough, I worked at Man City at the time, so it was very weird for me because I was on work <laughs> premises, but not for work. Um, you got put up and... And that was a really good little bridge gap where, you know, I met some great people. I still talked to the goalie coach who was there. Uh, he was at Forest Green at the time. And that was a really good experience that got me thinking that, you know, maybe I could maybe take a step again in the in a positive direction. Because um, I've had many times where I thought, oh, I'll just stop playing. I'll just stop playing. You know, I can, I can just work Saturdays and earn mm. some money. Do you know what I mean? And so that V9 and then that England thing was like, a thing for me to go no stick at it and see what happens I would never ever look back when I'm older and go uh, you know I could have you know I could have played I'm not going to sulk about it you know it's all with with keepers it's about just right place right time you play left back you can play right back Nathan Ake is a prime Mm, example he's a centre half he's playing left back there's a difference keepers you're a keeper unfortunately I wish we weren't but that's how it is it's just so you know them two opportunities were unbelievable and something obviously unfortunately COVID came along to uh, spoil the day with England C but yeah. again I never look back and go oh COVID so what you know I'm not did you get cap anyway did you no oh. didn't, no because oh, you, you don't because you don't play yeah, so yeah. Yeah. all I've got is the uh, the confirmation letter but like I say because of how I am away from the football environment I don't talk about it anyway, so it's not like in ten years I'd be in a pub and be going, "Oh, if I if COVID didn't come along, <laughs> nah, nah." You know, I'm grateful that I even got on the. I wouldn't have played anyway. Let's get it right. I wouldn't have played. Ben Killett would have played. Ben Killett was the best goalkeeper in that squad by far. The lad from Barnet would have been better than me. I'd have been your standard third choice goalkeeper who was there for training. And well, I was still there. more than so yeah, I yeah, was yeah. more than happy yeah. to just do that. I'd have been your seventh choice keeper. <laughs> do you know what I mean? If you, I would have been honestly, and I would have come home happy. Every opportunity, I try and just think of the positive. That is something that I did read about you online that I wanted to bring in as well. So you, you actually did some training at Man United, didn't you as well? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. For was it a Galo, a Galo trained, shooting practice? I trained with a Galo um, in Manchester. It weren't at United's training ground. It was at 
oh, I can't think where it's called. Um, the place in Manchester, basically, closer to Man City than it was to United, anyway. <laughs> and was it Manchester? So I was gonna, yeah, yeah. I, I'm glad you said it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so you got. Um, I just basically just got asked to go and do this thing with Agallo, um because something about when he came over because of COVID, he, he had to wait two weeks before he could go in with United or something. And I just asked if I'd be his training keeper for a session or two. Um, yeah. <clears throat> I'll never slag him off again for his finishing. <laughs> <laughs> did he make you? Did, did no, he? Did he it, it, don't get me wrong. He was shooting from eight yards, but yeah. you know, like look, you're Premier League City fans. Yeah. You'll watch him like a guy and go, "He's crap." Yeah, you know what I mean? Because you, you look at like your your Aguero's and stuff, yeah. and you compare, don't you? Yeah, yeah. Like we were saying before, he's not crap. Mm. He's good, and and it's bizarre how you'd even rate him. Say you say he was a six out of ten Premier League, but how good he is for a yeah, six yeah. out of ten. And it was a uh, because the Astro where we trained was horrific. Mm. It was it was horrific. It was old. It was and he made it look like you were playing at Wembley. Could, could you see? Could you see the difference in quality? Just the little touches, you know, the little yeah, finishes. Just, just that... out, just his movement and everything. It was just different. It was mm. like wow, like and I was only there an hour, but I was knackered when I came out <laughs> because and but he was really nice, really polite, really pleasant, um, and yeah, very grateful for that. And you know, I've been user city fans. I've I've worked with Stephen Island quite a lot, mm. doing his agency stuff and playing for his five-a-side team. I met some mad players while I've been there, Julian Lescott. And Fucking mm. hell! He, he, do, he does. I know where he does it. He uh, does it at the box. Yeah, and stuff in and, fourteen. Yeah, yeah, and it's you know done Friday nights there and stuff like that. And Stephen's always you know been at the end of the phone if I ever needed a mm. you know. He didn't know I'm a City fan or anything like that because he doesn't. We don't really talk about footy, but if I knew I needed a little bit of help or advice, I'd just. He's reach. just a nice guy. Yeah, 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 yeah. he strikes you. You know, like, one of a lad who he used to look after, Connor, who's he's at Tramir now. I think he's on trial at Tramir. You know, it, we get along quite well. He's part of the GKN as well, and mm-hmm. you know, it, I've been in with him a few days and stuff like that. It's like small opportunities that I, I definitely don't take for granted. If he asked me to come play five aside, I'd go and play five aside. As long as I'm not training, obviously. Or yeah, yeah, yeah. If it is a Friday night, I probably won't go because there's a game the next day. You don't want to get injured, do you? <laughs> play five aside and then go into the gaffer the next day. Hey, depends on it, who it's with. Like, yeah, <laughs> if, it's, if he's bringing his own teammates down. Yeah. Then, to be yeah. fair, he, he uses it a bit of a way where the lad, because he's an agent now, the yeah. way you know he brings down like young lads who he looks after and it's ways of that. It's great for them. Like, you know, and stuff like that. When I first told my dad, who was a City fan, he was like, Stephen Ireland is in the bald guy who used to play. I was like, yes, <laughs> Superman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, it's like, that opportunities like that are, you know, stuff that you can't, you can't take for granted. 100%. So, like, with this five-a-side, like, sort of team, so you, you mentioned Julian Lescott and then Stephen. A little Ireland. name drop. Yeah, a little like, sprinkle in it. He's the best five-a-side player I've ever seen. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Fucking is. <laughs> That's I'm not going to dispute that. Yeah. What do you think, Stephen? What, 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 what other big like names have been playing there? Then? Oh, or, or like people in the football league? To be fair, there? I think. Well, I love, know what it's I love like. a have name you, job. By the way, have you been in? <laughs> it's a box, yeah. 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 So like, there's two pitches in there, and that's how it is. The people I've seen there, not necessarily played five aside. Yeah. Grealish has been there before mm. with Nike doing a session and stuff like that. It's used as like a. I reckon all of them use it. It's just a case mm. of like Stephen books it out, you know. It's just a top tier sort of yeah. really good. And it's facilities a really decent well. place, yeah. The first time I ever went, I thought, wow, this is like this is top like when you hear about going playing five aside, you don't expect to turn up to that. Um there's all sorts of people there. I think Rashford's been down there a few times. Not while I've been there, but people who I know, my mates who, you know, also go. Yeah, yeah. Um yeah, I think it's just like a facility that's used for the footballers who live in the mm. area. Obviously it's not just for them. But like at night, I think they just book it out and, you know, they lock the doors so people can't just come in. You know, we're on next and stuff like that. And, you know, it's really good how they look after them, but also, you know, the lads pay and, you know, it's not like they get treated any different it's yeah. just, apart from locking the door. But that's, I think that's for the boxes mm. protection more than anything because you don't want hundreds of people turning up and, you know, doing like that because you never get in. Like, of course, yeah. Yeah, they're always well protected and, you know, you'd never knew they were there, so... Yeah, there's been all sorts of people there, to be honest. But playing, Julian's probably one of the, the biggest ones. But I think Stevens just brought out his own five aside, uh, his own eleven aside team. Really? Because they played Cheadle in a friendly, a Stephen Island eleven. So <laughs> I, I think that Stephen Island has now brought out his own. So Julian Lescott played in that game. Fucking hell! So I think Stevens yeah. trying to do it in a way where you know it's. 
fair play to him, you know. His lads are very good at football as well. No doubt they'll be professional or will play at a very good standard. One of his lads at Stoke, I think mm. he's had trials at Anderlecht and stuff like that. He's class. Then his youngest is technically unbelievable as well. So no doubt that he'll have a, not that he needs a retirement pot, but his son. <laughs> <laughs> his, Little commission. His his son's always said that. As, soon, yeah. as soon as I have a kid, Project Messi started <laughs> yeah. by the time they out the womb. His the sons will be there. able to maintain the uh, the lifestyle for a bit longer, yeah. maybe. Yeah. Yeah. But to be fair, I say lifestyle, he's so laid back. Mm. He, he ain't nothing like that. So fair play to him. And, you know, like them small opportunities that are so little, to some people are massive to somebody like me yeah um, mm. absolutely yeah definitely do you know like moving on from sort of like when when your playing time has finished because you were saying about how you have a, a view of the game you like to pick up little bits yeah. is coaching or management a thing that you want to go into uh, <laughs> that sets it all because <laughs> there's a there's, I wouldn't want to be a goalie coach I think 50 it's 50-50 like mm. right? because I, I have Will Buckley on here um, and straight I asked him the same question and he went no <laughs> he went no straight away he was like so he's now he's now into football it's agents as well so he's now an agent yeah. but he's, he's like I just don't want to be a coach he Never works with coach. half doesn't he yes. well he was half he was, yeah yeah, just always be, yeah I've, I've had Alex on here he's a good mate of mine yeah, Alex he's Alex, a really really good lad I've had a few boots for Alex I've been down to his well what was this his is, stuff this is fucking mental right because like, it's like when I went and filmed with, with Alex, he was casually just texting Billy Sharp and Jaden. Jaden, what's he called? Jaden Lowe, is he called? Yeah, yeah, he plays on Wednesday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he was just casually texting him, and I was like, what is happening here? And he was like, mate, I don't know. It's just <laughs> mental. And like, he, he went out and saw um, George, what's his surname? Plays, plays for United at the moment, Chef United. He went out and delivered, because he's, he's stopped mm. half now, he's moving into paddles. Uh, yeah, paddles. paddles. Um, and so he had like a few boots left so he, he, flew, he flew out and had a holiday and dropped some um, thingy off for George yeah. Yeah. yeah just casually I was like, but what? he's really good with like lads like me he doesn't yeah. treat me no different you know he, I went down to his shop because I was passing and he let me yeah. in and you know I could look around and he showed me stuff and that's that's why he runs a successful business because yeah. he doesn't treat anybody any differently um, oh he was great with me yeah. he, I, so I filmed at his boot room because yeah. um, he said to me he actually offered it to me and was like obviously you usually film it why don't you go and film uh, boot room and I was like perfect and then he was like I've just got into business with Will Buckley I was like what with football and he went yeah he went I was like, can I get him on here I went of course I can it's Will <laughs> Buckley and he was like yeah but I'll come to you this time so he came here on Tuesday night he lives like near Donny Way. Yeah, he Class. does. He lives near Doncaster. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, fucking hell, yeah. man. And he's been a, he's been a good. He'll probably watch this to be fair. Yeah, he does watch quite I a think, he's a good, he's a good like, lad, Alex. Like you say, it's 50 50. I wouldn't want to be a goalie coach. I yeah. No, nah, it just doesn't. I'm not even my badges to be a goalie coach. Yeah. It doesn't interest me to be a goalie coach. Not that I don't like keepers. Just, just doesn't interest me. A gaffer. Depends what people at home say. But um, <laughs> I'd like to be a gaffer. I think. Um, but again, it's a lot of commitment and a lot of time, even more time than I've got now. Because yeah, yeah. obviously you, you're planning and if you take it seriously, you're watching games at home and, you know, I've got a young family. I, that, it depends where I'm at at the time. I, I do, you know, retire. Um, I've always said I'd like to go back to Australia, um, either to play for the last few years I'm there or just go and go and live out there. Um so that would all depend on where I am and what I'm doing. I don't think I'd bother going into management over there. Um, don't think anybody would be offended with me saying that the standard's not as good. So I right, just, 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 I, just it, yeah. I just, I just don't think I'd, you know, I'd, I'd do that. I'd, I'd like to coach in men's football. I wouldn't like to do academies or anything like mm. that. That doesn't really interest me. I think non-league and men's football, yeah, but academies and stuff like that, no, I, I don't think I'd, 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 I'd do that, no. No. I have to say about Australia though, because you're a big cricket fan as well. Mm -hmm. Like going, so how was actually going over and playing Australia? Because when did you go? Were you like oh, when, young? Yeah, yeah. When I was like eighteen. Yeah, what the yeah. hell? That's a big step, isn't it? For yeah. an old... I should never have come back. Really? really? Do you regret? Yeah. Uh, a little bit. Yeah and no, because I came back and like. You'd ask somebody who, like, I don't know, like, not you two, but somebody who's a football fan, and I said, I have a good career. They'd laugh at me and go, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, good one. You played yeah. at National League. But actually, for me, and I didn't start playing football until I was, like, 13, 14. Mm -hmm. So if you would have said to me 15 oh, years yeah. ago, you'd play 300 games in the National That's League, mad. and then, you know, you've, you've been at a pro club and you've done this and you've mm -hmm. done that, I'd have snatched your hand off. Yeah. So, you know, I, out in Australia, I went there after... Chesterfield 
before I obviously came back and played for Curzon, I played outfield and played goal. Mm. Played in goal twice. <laughs> and I thought, I don't know, I'm not playing in goal here. <laughs> playing outfield. And just played up front. Scored a few goals and yeah. Okay, fun. So w- what was living in Australia like? Is it just Unreal. completely different to here? Yeah. Unreal. Mm-hmm. Did you did you play any cricket over there as well? Because this is what fascinates no, me. No, but I watched cricket. And it fascinated me of how invested they are in cricket. Yeah. Like, no- even, like, kids' cricket, though. Yeah. Like, you, you it's number two sport, isn't it? It's Aussie Rules number one, and then... That's, that's a pe- weird game. Yeah. <laughs> I, <laughs> that's I, I, no, I like Aussie... Aussie Rules I is like a weird it. thing, where it's like nine o'clock in the morning, there's nothing on TV, I turn BT, yeah. or TN, whatever they can call it now. <laughs> yeah. And it's always Aussie Rules, and, and I just find as I watch it for an hour, I bet I, I've got a basic idea what's going on, but I don't really know. And it's then like you just twelve have... sports mixing in one. It's, it's, it's like class. rugby, basketball, because you got to bounce it. Yeah. And it's yeah. played on a cricket field. Yeah, yeah. In, in that weird shape. It's the only field that's uh, sort of like an oval as yeah, well. Yeah, isn't yeah. It? And then not... the goals are just poles. <laughs> it's just little poles. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. There's no <laughs> like, like line. Of the like, what is happening here? And then there's a circle near the poles where <laughs> yeah. when you kick it in, if you catch it, no one can come near you. Yeah, it's like a, mm. you get a free kick if you catch it. And I'm like. What? Oh, and they all wear vests and really short shorts yeah. just to make it even yeah, more it's confusing. Bizarre. Yeah, it's bizarre. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so I'd, I'd stick to cricket if I was in yeah. Australia. <laughs> <laughs> Netball's massive over there. Yeah. Really? They, yeah, yeah, yeah. They're a very, very good team. They the have, Australian mm, women's yeah, team. They have good. mixed teams. I played in a mixed netball team for about, I don't know, about six months. You play every sport. Oh, yeah. I was having a look at you online. I saw a report. And, I mean, where, and by the way, of, it's literally every sport. Like you play bowls. Who plays bowls? I was like, <laughs> I'm fucking by mental. the way, I'm unbeaten at bowls this year. <laughs> That's incredible. I played for. That is one of the best brags we've had on this podcast. Can I just say? Yeah, I'm, I'm unbeaten, unbeaten at bowls, bowls this, this season. Year. This season. This season. Not ever. This season. Played 13, one thirteen. Yeah, I, 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 I play only with my dad, but yeah. it's quite relaxing. Yeah, I, I did a. That, I, when yeah, I was the I was only re- college, I basically, I got into it because. The team up at the social club where we touched yeah, on yeah, before yeah. we came on air, like where they were short, and the steward mm. up there just said, "Listen, you're a sports lad. Just pretend you bowl into your fullback." I went, "But the ball's bigger, like, and <laughs> it's weighted, and, and it moves, <laughs> and, and it moves <laughs> left and right." <laughs> <laughs> this, this, this is you nothing like the same. <laughs> <thing. Yeah. laughs> and he just said, "Look, we're really short. Would you help out on a Monday night?" I said, oh, for fuck's sake. I said, yeah, go on. I absolutely loved it after about two games. I beat an old fella and he threw his towel on the floor and I went, I'm in here. I'm playing this forever. <laughs> ah, you Give it a knee slide on it. Yeah, did you turn up and, to be fair, the older generation love it because they're seeing a young lad, mm. like, even though I don't feel young, yeah. playing a sport they love that's probably dying, to yeah, be honest. Yeah. And I look, it's just peaceful. I go, no one bothers me. No one asks me about football. Nobody asks me about work. No one's shouting about No one's misses. shouting about <laughs> yeah. No one's calling hey, me a pedo. John, hey, John, John loves it, you know. Yeah. No, one, no one's calling me a pedo as I'm about to bowl the ball or anything. You know, it's just like, just peaceful. Your shit. Yeah. Ah. Oh, I get called shit now and again. Yeah, yeah. I do get called shit now and again when I do bowl the ball. But it's just peaceful and it's a very, like, social environment. The thing mm. with that, mm. my team on a Monday night, it's nothing to do with bowls. It's getting out the house mm. because they're obviously all the people. Some blokes on that team are 88, 87. Hell. They're getting out the house and they're, they're interacting with the mates and they're going for a pint after the bowls mm. and it's a social thing. Yeah, yeah. And I've just carried on because one, it's just an escape it, it, and it is. It, I've struggled, listen, not many people know it, but I'll openly say it. I've struggled mentally in the past mm. because I've had a lot going on in my life. I got diagnosed with depression and things like that, and I, I didn't, I couldn't find an escape where I could just switch off. And I went there and I just switched off. That is the only sport where I've lost, and it's not really bothered me. Mm. Because oh, nice. it's, it's just fun. Yeah, it's that's, just. It, I suppose you need well, that, though, don't you? Yeah, just that, a little, yeah. It's not fun when it's pissing down and you're on a, you know. <laughs> yeah, but, yeah. but it's just a switch off where, you know, I don't get wound up about it. Naturally, you want to win, but if you lose, I just go, well, he has been playing 50 years, Cameron, if you just, you know, just accept that, you know, and, you know, and stuff like that. It's like, up at the club, darts, snooker, pool. Mm, fucking love darts. Play, yeah. play all I them. and fucking love darts. Play all them and it's like, you know. I'm, so I've got a dartboard. So I, in my working day, so I work from home quite a bit. Yeah. So I, I've got a wireless headset now. That's the best thing work have ever given me, by the way. So you're, all you're I do, doing calls whilst you're trying to hit one yeah. of these. <laughs> Yeah, literally. I want a my. Fir- I've only ever hit three one eighties. My third one I did on call. 
And honestly, <laughs> I got a mate who was sending me to listen it back. I don't know how I didn't scream. I had to mute the mic. <laughs> yeah. I was buzzing. Yeah, I, yeah. I love darts. Stuff like that. I'm actually filming with a pro darts way tomorrow. Oh, yeah. I'm going over to Chester. Is it beaten by any chance? Yes, it is. <laughs> <laughs> First of all, what the fuck have you known that? How do you know that? Because I know who beaten is. Beaten give me my dartboard and my darts. <laughs> but how do you know what I'm filming with him tomorrow? Because he told me. Oh, <laughs> oh, oh shit out. Nah, well, you could have had me nah, right. Nah, nah, you could nah, have had anything nah. there. Um, he, uh, he, when you put it on yesterday, yeah, he yeah. said, oh, I'm filming with these ads on Monday. I said, yeah, I'm there tomorrow. Beaten used to work for Curzon. Did he? Yeah, he used to be like, Beaten, what the fuck did you do at Curzon? I don't know. Yeah, he did so something. I, he's, I, he's no I, mug I, I randomly either, found fact, him two I'll weeks watch, ago when he hit a nine data. I'll on, watch your yeah, podcast yeah. if you can find out what he did at Curzon yeah. for a season. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's nah, one, he's, ex, he's one a, extra view. Yeah, he's, yeah. He's, yeah. A, he's a great lad, to be fair. And like I say, he left a dartboard and darts for me. I said to him, I said, look, I need a dartboard because I was really into I don't really play that much, but I was really into it. I was spending an hour plus a day on a dartboard mm. and I was hammering this dartboard. I said, beaten, I need a dartboard. Where can I get one from? We weren't asking him for anything for free. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he went, when are you next in Chester? I went, well, never, because I hate Cheshire Oaks, because <laughs> my money gets spent. And then he just said, listen, drive by mine, and I'll give you some. I'll give you one. I said, no, no. He said, no, no, do it. So I did, and he, he, he texted me saying, oh, I'm not in. I went, well, I've just drove all this way, beaten, and you're not in. Well, what am I going to do? He went, I've left it on the drive. Seriously, he left me a dartboard, he left me a bag of darts, Loads of sets of darts, different weights, flights, Class, stems, and he guy. just went, "Yeah, enjoy." I went, "Yeah, you're good." Yeah, at darts. I'm. Um, I'm. I'm having a game with him tomorrow. Oh yeah. So Are I, you bought, I, bought, it? I bought. Yeah, I bought the. Do you know that like the lapel mics you get where you just clip yeah. on? Yeah. So, so I've asked Ollie Lota for his recommendations. Which yeah. said be better. So I bought them. But I just plug into your phone and a forty average, not even a pub player. Probably a Tuesday night player when it's a pub quiz. I yeah. play with my mate. And I'm going to have a game against a pro, and yeah, the average is like fucking 85. Nah, he's, a really, he's, a, he's, a, he's a really good lad. He'll, he'll enjoy his company. He's, uh, he's, he, he's into his football massively. Yeah, he's yeah. into his non league a lot, so yeah, he'll probably tell you I'm shitting gold. So. Yeah. He'll say he's shit. He knows darts. his stuff. <laughs> <laughs> he knows, he, he knows, I've never played him at darts, you know. I've never played him at darts. Never played him at darts. Uh, I seen that he hit a nine darter. Yeah, yeah. Really, I was like, oh, buzzing, Joe. Fucking know? mental in a yeah. nine darter in, in, a, in a pro competition. I think as that's well. one of the hardest things you can ever do in sport. Yeah, yeah. yeah. about 147. People, people don't, uh, yeah, 147 is above it, but yeah. people don't realise just how hard darts is. No, like people say, oh, it's only nine darts. Yeah, but when you stood yeah. as far away from that board yeah. in that small space as you think, it's not as easy. Like, say, well, I, I've never hit a 180. I've, I've done uh, 177, but. You, 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 until you. Oh, one seven seven's a bloody bold achievement, that. Oh, yeah, yeah, that. yeah, yeah. I was, I was, <laughs> <laughs> I was. That's why I said it. Um, but when, but until you come close to hitting a one eight, till you hit it, to then do it again, and then to check out, it's just you it's know sensational. Yeah. One four one is not a nice check out either, and you're like, what is happening? Mm. Yeah, he's, I think he's hit more than one as well. I'm sure he has. Yeah, I'm sure he's hit more two. than one. I think he's hit two in pro competition. In pro competition. I imagine how many he's hit in the in the, in the in yeah. Like the yeah, I'm league, sure so. he's hit more than I'm sure he's hit more than one. So yeah, he, he'll be a good guest on here. And like I say, he's into his football and obviously his darts. He's traveling all over the world playing yeah. darts. is amazing. So yeah, he's a good lad. I wish I would have had you going there for a bit longer. <laughs> 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 I think shall we end on a bit of cricket chat because uh, we, yeah, I, I, I know you've been dying because you, you love your yeah, cricket. Yeah, it's a summer for it, isn't it? Yeah, especially well, when I want to talk about the Ashes for a little bit. So you, you mentioned about Alex Carey. <laughs> yeah, so. Why, what what is your opinion on, on Alex Carey? I, 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 what, on him or on what he did? Well, I mean both, because I've got a very strong opinion on it. Have you watched the documentary? No. The Test on Amazon? Yeah, yeah it's class. Have you watched it? Yeah, it's class. No, watch it's it. one of the best. It's one of the best documentaries sport I've ever watched. Yeah, it's up there. And I thought he was lovely on it. Uh, he, in fact, I thought they all were. There wasn't really anybody uh, where I thought. Oh, no, the Australia. Well, you know he's living in, living in Australia. So, I, obviously, I play cricket all my life. A lot of the pros we've mm. had are Aussies. Yeah. Aussies are the best, the best club pros you want. The big drinkers, great laughs, and they have this exact same sense of humour as us. Yeah. Like, when I was talking to Ollie in, in the group chat, like, Aussies... A class people. Mm. Like I love Aussies. Like, if, that's Most what, of them. If I didn't live here, I believe I'd, I'd live yeah, in Australia. I, that's I, I'd that. recommend anyone to go to Australia. Just yeah. Thingy it, but I actually don't mind what he did. I don't mind it at all. He was completely out. Mm. Why is he walking? 
I, he did it five times before that, where he just walked and out. And if you look, he actually threw the ball while he was in his crease. Yeah, he literally went so, straight away. So it's not like... He's a... dozy best, though, isn't he? Yeah, it? and I'm a bowler, so if I'm, I'm telling my keeper to do that. 100%. <laughs> well, I wicket keep, so like I say, I'd have done it. So <laughs> yeah. I can't yeah. get to sit here and go, oh, what an idiot. <laughs> well, what, what, what do you make of... Because I, I think it's probably one of the biggest talking points in cricket, but spirit of the game. And it's a, for me, I see it as a, a meaningless statement, but it's probably the only sport I can think of where those unwritten rules do come into play a little yeah, bit. You know, yeah, you, yeah, you yeah. do have these... Like, I, I probably wouldn't have said Carey should have done that it was a little. It was bending. It was bending the rulers so much that he didn't snap. But fair enough. It's it's a sport. Yeah, yeah. You get your competitive. Edge. I suppose you could have warned him. But then I sit there and think you're in an ashes. Mm. You want to win? Would you warn him? It's Johnny Bears though. If yeah. he was in a World Cup yeah. final, you know, and the keeper was off his line all the time, would you go keeps? If you don't get back on your line, I'll lob you. No, you wouldn't. Mm. You'd, you'd you'd lob him. Yeah. So I think you know, like you say. Some, I reckon, would say, just be careful where mm. you're going. Don't wander off, because I will stump you. Don't forget, there's a lot of other things in it as well. One, that he actually hit it first time, because yeah. he could have easily missed. Mm. Yeah. And if he did miss, he could have said, that's your warning. Yeah. So I suppose he might have been, well, he's trying to get him out. I think the it? only issue for me was the fact it was the end of the over. And if it had, if he'd done it mid over and he'd gone wandering down to do a bit of gardening or whatever, fair enough, you know. Yeah, it's there. Yeah. But I think he taps his back down, he, he he could have he could have stayed there and he could have waited for the umps to call it, but I I, I don't know. Yeah, it, it, it was just, me it off. It was, but Johnny would have done the same thing. Probably, and, and, and yeah, yeah and, and he, he would have done exactly. That. That's what that's what confused me. And I think about he did try. I think he did he try has, yeah, in yeah. the first test at Edgefast. Yeah, he, and he keeps joking about it now, like as in with his actions. I mean, he's not come out and said yeah, anything. Yeah. I think if he would have come out and said, "I messed up. I shouldn't have left my crease." It might have just squashed it and yeah, it, wouldn't have, yeah. it wouldn't have gone on for a bit longer. Because, like, Owen Morgan said on commentary, he's out. He's, he's, he's out. out. He's, yeah. out. Mm. he's out. He's out fair and square. He's out. So I think if Bearstow would have come out and said, I messed up. Yeah. Like, it's stop. not a man card. It's nothing that, like... It's it's would you ever man card No. No, 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 that goes back to the spirit of cricket, doesn't it? Because legally, it's... yeah. Well, it depends how much of it he's taking a piss. It depends how much he, like, yeah. yeah, but I, I wouldn't ever mank. But I, I bowl, seen bowling. I can't fucking stop. <laughs> I got a turning circle, the lorry mate. <laughs> I ain't stopping. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm in my delivery side. They just snuck through for the <laughs> before you even <laughs> had the chance. You see me bowl? I can't stop. I, I end up halfway down the track. I'm all at eight sixty miles an hour. Steam train. <laughs> yeah. No, I wasn't. I, I thought he did nothing wrong, to be yeah. fair. Like yeah. you say, it's a fine line between breaking the rules and, mm. and the spirit of the game, but if Bearstow did it, would we be that bothered? No, I'd, I'd be celebrating it, yeah. Agreed. So I think it's one of them. I think there was more controversy because it was a wicket keeper on a wicket keeper. Mm. Yeah. So like you go, oh, well, wicket keeper's that. But like I've watched it a number of times, not the incident, but the you know the cricket since, and you can see him turning around and smiling and laughing at each other. Yeah, so yeah, I don't yeah. think Bearstow's got any hard feelings mm. towards him. No, they're all mates, aren't they? They all they all play in yeah. the bash. That's they the play. thing. They all yeah. play white ball contracts with each yeah, other. Yeah, so they yeah. all know each other, don't they? And they're all they're all they'll all be in a group chat with one another somewhere along the line. Yeah, so definitely. you know it, it is what it is, but. Yeah, I wasn't. I've enjoyed the cricket this summer actually. So it's been class. Been, yeah, it's been really class. good. I, I really Shame it just didn't have the ending. Yeah, yeah. deserved. Yeah, if it, more typical Manchester weather. I know, it, I but, know. But I've enjoyed the cricket this year. But you know, been some interesting decisions. You know, declaring and stuff and stuff yeah, like that. It's and, been fun. That's what it's been. It's been. Yeah, fun, it's yeah. just been. I mean, that's what, what different. You, what you, what you, and obviously, Brody coming out and retiring yesterday was. Yeah. Bit weird when he said he decided at half eight the night before. <laughs> thought, and, then went, and then went to Stokes' room. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, hello. <laughs> All right. So Stokes' room at half eight. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and you came out retired. Takes basketball <laughs> to a different level, doesn't it? <laughs> right, yeah. And, you know, it was like, oh, fair enough. And that's a big hole we've got to fill. Yeah, mm. definitely. Well, uh, obviously, I know you're, you're doing this show, so we'll do a few quick fire questions just to end off. Um, so, best player you played with? With yeah, Whoa. famous or just no, just, just like the, the best, like the best technical player you think you think you played with. Obviously, you played at what like, three very big clubs. Mm. Best technical player I've ever played with. That's an unbelievable question. Um, there used to be a lad at well, an older fella at Chesterfield called Jack Lester. His shirt's retired. He could finish. He was he was yeah. unbelievable. Um, Ian Everett. Yeah. Uh, oh, <laughs> yeah. Fair enough. <laughs> he played at Chesterfield. He was centre yeah. half. He he was obviously I was only a young lad, so I say play with. I trained with him every day. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. He was 
he was unbelievable. Um, well, what plays played against as well? Against? Played against Balotelli's brother. He was unbelievable. <laughs> um, I didn't even know he had a brother. <laughs> <laughs> he was Don't think he does. <laughs> <laughs> he was unbelievable. Che Adams. Wow. When he played for Ilkeston. Bloody hell. He's got an hat-trick against me. And two of them were overhead kicks. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe I've just admitted that. <laughs> shake his hand, shake his hand and walk off. Che, yeah, che Adams, when he played for Ilkeston, paid behind closed doors friendly. He's got an hat trick and two of them were all red kicks. That's incredible. And I thought, you're all right. Uh, going, yeah, he's going places. Think who else. It's hard when you're on the spot to think yeah, who yeah. you played against. Obviously, non league, you play against some players, you go, wow, he's good. Mm, Why? Yeah. Obviously, but, you know, yeah, Che Adams is probably one of the, one of the best. John McAtee I played with who's at Luton nice, now yeah. who was at Grimsby on loan yeah, yeah. he was at Curzon and he, he didn't do anything at Curzon to be honest he, he, he was, you, he hear, was good. you hear about these stories though don't he you? was good I'm not saying he weren't good you could see he was technically good but he never did anything in training he did but I mean if he was a Curzon fan he'd never go wow John McAtee's mm. going to be but obviously he now plays fair enough he, yeah, well, he's he, a he Premier won. League player now league, yeah, yeah, yeah I just realised so, yeah. so yeah he, I'd say he's probably up there technically but Jack Lester was just something else yeah. he just took the mick yeah. out of people and for his age by the way I played with him when he was like late 30s so I think wow imagine how good you would have been mid-20s yeah when you would have been 10 years ago tragic story as well yeah yeah definitely well thank you very much for coming down and speaking to us really appreciate that no problem uh, if you are watching on YouTube make sure you like comment down below as well what you thought on the episode if you're listening on Spotify give us a 5 star review and um, we shall see you next week thank you thank you